Introduction The smartest man who ever lived was a Roman Catholic theologian. Actually, not a theologian of the Roman Catholic Church, but the theologian of the Roman Catholic Church. I am speaking of Thomas Aquinas. There was a massive tome he wrote but did not finish in his life. That book was never finished by him and is called the Summa Theologica, the Summary of Theology. In that book, Thomas summarizes five ways to prove the existence of God. It is important to realize that these five ways in the Summa Theologica are just summaries of longer arguments. So the five ways are not five full-blown proofs uh, in the Summa Theologica, uh, he's merely giving a summary of these proofs. In the subsequent videos of this series, I shall go through the five ways um, of Thomas Aquinas, the five ways of proving the existence of God. And of course, that doesn't exhaust the ways of proving God, uh, but that is that is five ways to do it. Before getting to the proofs themselves, or rather the summaries of the proofs themselves, I need to address something which Thomas makes use of multiple times, but never really explains in detail. He just sort of takes it for granted. And that is the principle that it is impossible to have an infinite regress, an explanatory infinite regress. Understanding this principle is essential if we are to understand what Aquinas is trying to say. The principle is best illustrated, I think, by way of a thought experiment. Imagine you write a check with insufficient funds in your bank account. The check shall obviously bounce. You want to avoid bouncing a check at all costs, so you quickly write another check from a different bank to cover the insufficient funds at the first bank. Um, this is all well and good, but then you realize, we are further supposing, that the second bank uh, also contains ins insufficient funds. So you write a third check from still another bank, but that will bounce too and so on ad infinitum. This state of affairs is not really possible, of course, but we can imagine it. And this is a perfect example, if it were to really occur, of an infinite regress, an infinite regress of checks. But notice what happens. The first check still bounces. No matter how many rubber checks are written to cover the first check, even if there are an infinite number of rubber checks, the first rubber check still bounces. In the following videos, uh, Thomas uh, shall be referring not to infinite regresses of checks. Instead, he'll be referring to infinite regresses of explanatory grounding. So in, in the following videos, we'll uh, be reading and discussing what Thomas has said about infinite, uh, about infinite uh, regresses. And, and again, he, he's not really explaining what he, what he means by the term infinite regress or why the um, why it can't? Why a regress can't be infinite? He's just appealing and saying, uh, if we have an infinite regress in this particular situation or that particular situation, uh, it's impossible. Uh, so we can discount that uh, in the course of our five ways. Uh, so x is explained on the basis of y, which in turn is explained on the basis of z, and so on to infinity. That that that's that would be an infinite regress. This Thomas correctly points out as I said, is not possible. It's impossible. To say that no, to say there is no x, uh, <laughs> tongue tied, uh, to say there is no ultimate explanation is to say there is no explanation at all. And what follows, as we look at the five ways, please keep this in mind. Since Thomas doesn't go into detail on this principle of uh, the impossibility of an infinite regress, and why it's impossible, we might hesitate to accept it. We might hesitate to accept the principle. However, once you understand why he says it, and I've just explained why uh, it is impossible to have a 
uh, regress of infinite length, uh, we, then we can agree that he, Thomas, is correct. You now know why an infinite regress is impossible. So infinite regresses are impossible for the reasons I've explained with the uh, check uh, thought experiment, and we will make use of that impossibility, uh, or Thomas will, uh, in his five arguments. All right, so the five ways are as follows. First, the argument from motion. Second, the argument from causation. Third is the argument from contingency. Then the argument from perfection. So these first four ways of the five ways, the, the first four ways are different versions of the cosmological argument. The fifth and final way is an interesting and unusual version of the teleological argument. Uh, the five ways come from Summa Theologica, first part, question two, 1266 to 68. Uh, so we will begin in the next video with our look at the argument from motion.